Hello, welcome to Reflective Hour. I'm Tammy Tony Butler, your host today. But we all know who your true host is, and that's Christ. May you see him, this program, his healing, his journey to the cross for you so you could be set free. May this never be about me. I'm merely a vessel that he channels. I want you to see him and only him. Because he is who can set you free from addiction, from childhood trauma, adversity, negative circumstances, the weight of it all. There's hope in Christ. You can be set free. You can be free. So we're going to dive in today. So, as always, grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's reflect together, let's journey together. I am still on his journey, I'm still being uh, made a new creature in Christ, he's transforming my heart, my mind, my body everything. Someone asked me, when will you know that you've arrived? How will you know who you were always supposed to be? I think I'm still asking that question. I don't know. I'm down 70 pounds and walking in his glory and his goodness, shedding addiction after addiction, being made completely whole, transformed by the renewal of my mind. Christ gets all the glory. So let's dive in and see what he has to say to you today. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come so that I can make sure that I only speak your truth. May they see your truth. May they have spiritual eyes to see even what's in and ears so that they can listen to what's said. May they see the invisible, and walk in faith, walk by faith. May they rebuke their negative circumstances and say, no more will I live in bondage. I will be set free now. I choose life. I choose freedom. I choose deliverance. Like the man with the withered hand, stretch it out. Father's way. Holy Spirit's waiting to guide you. Mm, let that peace, just breathe that peace in. Mm, let it permeate your very being. As we reflect again, this day. This is reflective out. And this one's about unity, love, and peace. We're going to start by looking at Exodus 29, 44 through 46 in the New International Version. So I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar and will consecrate Aaron and his sons to serve me as priests. Then I will dwell among the Israelites and be their God. They will know that I am the Lord their God who brought them out of Egypt so that I might dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. God's action in bringing the Israelites out of Egypt, showed his great desire to dwell among them and protect them, as a good father wants to protect his children. God wants to live in our hearts, guide us, and direct our steps. Exodus 29, 10 through 41, 
it spoke of a centralized, standardized form of worship that prevented problems of individuals creating their own kind of false worship and leading the church astray, the true church. The order prevented division amongst church members, which can produce an environment of chaos and upheaval and prevent peace and stillness, which is contrary to where the spirit of the Lord dwells. Where Christ is dwelling, there is no confusion, chaos, or drama. Only peace, joy, love. Satan brings division, which chokes out the true word of God. Now let's look at the New Testament for a guide as we continue our journey. The letters of Paul to Titus and Timothy are his last writings and mark the end of his life and ministry. Paul wanted Titus to teach the scriptures as well as live them. We must be doers of the word. We must teach, encourage, and offer correction when warranted. Correction is actually love. Let's look at Titus 2.15, the New International Version. These then are the things you should teach. Encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. We cannot save everyone nor is our responsibility as leaders. Our responsibility is to protect the peace, which is how the Holy Spirit flows in and through us and out to others. We must protect the flow. Anyone threatening the peace and flow must have a healthy boundary set, a healthy border. Borders and boundaries show we love ourselves and we love others. If you've been victimized, as I was, this is the first thing that predators tried to erode or take from us. We must put the guardrails back up and take control of our lives. Our peace is our responsibility. Your peace is your responsibility. My mother could not protect me as a child. She had no boundaries, no guardrails of protection, thus opening me up to predator after predator, abuse pile upon abuse. Our children deserve our protection and maintaining our peace and placing healthy borders or boundaries with others ensures their safety and their protection. Many of us had parents who were incapable of placing boundaries because they had never been taught them and suffered their own victimization or they were, they were parenting in survival mode in the math, aftermath of trauma, merely existing and were incapable of doing so. That was my mother's case. This realization allowed me to forgive my mother and let go of all that hurt, which was destroying me, living in unforgiveness and bitterness. It was so liberating when I was able to forgive her. It was liberating for her also. The cycle has to end with you. Protect your peace at all costs and remove unhealthy, divisive people from your life if they refuse to respect your boundaries and your borders. You pray for them, but they do not get to destroy your peace or your ministry. Paul warned of that spirit of division and spoke of right living in society in Titus 3. Let's read Titus 3 now. I'll be reading from the New International Version. It's also titled Saved 
in order to do good. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate and always be gentle toward everyone. At one time, we were, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done. No, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. These things are excellent and profitable. Okay. Now let's pay close attention to Titus 3, 9 to 11. But avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law because these are unprofitable and useless. Warn a divisive person once and then warn them a second time. After that, have nothing to do with them. You may be sure that such people are warped and sinful. They are self-condemned. And in final remarks, as soon as I send Artemis Articus to you, do your best to come to me at Nicholas because I have decided to winter there. Do everything you can to help Zanus the lawyer and Apollos on their way and see that they have everything they need. Our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good in order to provide for urgent needs and not live unproductive lives. Everyone with me sends your greetings. Greet those who love us in faith. Grace be with you all. A person must be warned when he or she is causing division that threatens the unity of the church. And remember, we are the church. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am with them, as it says in Matthew 18, 20. This warning is not to be heavy-handed action, but is int intended to correct the individual's divisive nature and restore him or her true fellowship. A person who refuses to be corrected and change their negative, divisive behaviors must be put outside your ministry or fellowship. If not, the seeds you are planting will fall on infertile soil and risk being destroyed. This person is sinning, causing division and strife, and needs to have a boundary or border place so they cannot destroy your peaceful worship in place of stillness with the Lord. That boundary place, that gentle form of correction, may point them to repentance and rebuking that critical judgmental spirit and seeking that true freedom at the cross. Pray for them, love them, but let them go if need be so the Lord can work further in their life. We are to pray for those who persecute us. As it says in Matthew 5, 44, I remember my own story, my own trauma. As I reflect back, I would get so angry and I would also get critical, judgmental. I would be jealous, envious of others. I would get offended. I would believe negative and focus on negative. Christ opened my heart and changed my perspective and realized that that was all residue left over from trauma. I had to rebuke that critical spirit. I had to rebuke that manipulative spirit, that self-sabotaging spirit, that critical spirit, those spirits of jealousy, strife, envy. I had to rebuke all of that. We all have our path and our purpose in the kingdom of God. There's room for all of us. We are all fearfully, beautifully, and wonderfully made, daughters and sons of the King. We have to maintain our peace so that we can pour into others because you cannot pour from an empty cup. 
Christ brings us to a wellspring of living water. Every moment we can draw from it. It's always there. He's always ready to pour into your life, into your finances, into your circumstances. Seek him. He will pour into you his peace that surpasses all understanding. You will be rejuvenated and renewed in mind, body, and spirit as I was. He will show you the weeds. He will show you the tear in the wheat. And in time, they will be separated. You'll be pruned. You'll be crushed even. But you will move past it all. And you will ask yourself, what is God trying to teach me in this season of my life? How can I move past these things and move in to who he's called me to be on that narrow righteous path for his kingdom's sake? That's what this is about, our journeys for him. We are visitors here. This is not our home. Our home is with God. We are here for a purpose. We must fulfill that purpose and to win souls into the kingdom of God, to bring unity, not division, peace, stillness, love. If I brought that to you today, then I've done what he's called me to do. For his peace that surpasses all understanding. It's what keeps me going every day as the darkness threatens to consume me. My perspective is to choose the light. My choice is to choose hope. My choice is to put those boundaries in place and let nothing destroy my peace. It took me forever to get it, forever to be able to sleep through the night, forever to have that moment of stillness of calm to where I don't have 60,000 negative thoughts in my head threatening, threatening to consume me and overtake me. He lifted it off of me and set me free. And I will not let anyone take my peace, my joy. You fight for yours too. He's waiting. Reach out to your feet. Seek the cross. That's where true freedom is. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Reflective Hour with Tammy.